welcome, my friend. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I want to thank Penty Patrol Star Wars for helping me out with the outline for this video. This scenario has been in my mind ever since the Ahsoka series came out. When you get the opportunity, please check out his channel. The link will be in the description. One of the best things about the Ahsoka series is the dynamic between Shin Ha Ti and Sabine Wren. The characters mirror each other. Both are apprentices of former Jedi. Both experience tensions with their masters, at one point being abandoned by them. Both are ultimately stranded on Peridia. However, their stories run in reverse. At the show's beginning, Ahsoka and Sabine are on the outs, and Balin Skull and Shin Ha Ti are together. As the show progresses, Sabine and Ahsoka become closer, with Ahsoka accepting Sabine as her apprentice once again. Shin and Balin, however, grow further apart until eventually, Balin abandons Shin altogether. So I wanted to do a story on what if Sabine and Shin fell in love. Personally, I think they'll eventually become allies in Season 2 of Ahsoka. Part of me is hoping that Sabine and Shin get together. I feel like they have chemistry in a way. The fact that Natasha and Ivana support the ship makes it better. So sit back, drop a like, and if you're new, please subscribe, and let's get into it. The moonlit night cast shadows over the Nodi camp as Ahsoka and Sabine stood vigilant, defending against the Sutton Marauder raid. Blaster bolts clashed against lightsabers, echoing through the wilderness, and the air buzzed with tension. Amidst the chaos, Sabine found herself locked in a lightsaber duel with Shin Ha Ti. As the duel reached its height, sparks illuminating the strained expressions of both combatants, an unspoken intensity lingered, a magnetic force pulling them closer, yet keeping them apart. Ahsoka, observing the spectacle, could sense the emotional undercurrents beneath the surface, a complexity that went beyond the usual clash of ideologies. When Shin broke off the duel, retreating with the Marauders, Ahsoka approached Sabine with a knowing look. The unspoken connection between them and the uncharted territory of emotions demanded acknowledgement. Something's different. You hesitated. Sabine, her gaze lingering on the path where Shin disappeared, took a moment before responding. I've never been one to let personal feelings get in the way. There's just something about her. Ahsoka, recalling her own experiences with attachments, offered a gentle but firm perspective. I've seen where suppressing emotions can lead. Sometimes, acknowledging what you feel is the key to understanding. Time passed, marked by unspoken contemplation, until the next confrontation unfolded. Whether it be another raid, or a different trial, Sabine found herself hesitating again. This time, it wasn't just about defending the Nodi, but navigating the uncharted waters of emotions she had long kept at bay. During a moment of tension, Shin, sensing Sabine's hesitation, remarked with a mix of curiosity and challenge. What's holding you back, Mandalorian? Is it fear? Sabine, grappling with her own internal conflicts, struggled to find words. It was an opportunity for an awkward yet charming moment, a key turning point in their dynamic. As the duel continued, Shin's persistent probing allowed glimpses of vulnerability to surface. Amidst the chaos, Ahsoka observed the shifting dynamics, recognizing the potential for a connection that transcended the surface-level clashes. The complexity of emotions, long dormant in Sabine, hinted at the possibility of a profound shift. As the quest to uncover Balin Skull's mysterious objective unfolded, both groups found themselves on a parallel path. Ahsoka and Sabine, joined by the Nodi, moved with a sense of purpose, while Shin, leading the Marauders, followed a path seemingly parallel yet divergent. In the quiet of the night, Shin approached Sabine, the firelight dancing on their faces. She subtly informed Sabine of the Marauders' presence, a moment that highlighted a connection forming amidst the chaos. Ahsoka, ever perceptive, offered Shin the chance to stay with them, a decision that resonated with Shin's quest for belonging. I never thought I'd find a place among those who once opposed me. Ahsoka, echoing the lessons she learned from Anakin and her own experiences, responded with wisdom. Sometimes, unexpected balances bring about the greatest strengths. 
The journey continued, a blend of camaraderie and uncharted emotions as Sabine and Shin discovered a shared purpose beyond the conflicts that had once defined them. Amidst the cosmic wilderness of Peridia, a connection blossomed, laying the foundation for an alliance that extended beyond the quest to return to the main galaxy. The journey through Peridia led both groups, Ahsoka and Sabine with the Nodi, and Shin with the Marauders, close to the heart of the mysterious quest. As they delved deeper into the wilderness, the air crackled with an otherworldly energy, signaling the proximity to something agent and powerful, the Mortis Gods. Shin, driven by the whispers of the marauders who had once served her master, Balin Skull, felt a growing urgency to uncover the secrets hidden in the heart of Peridia. Sabine, caught between her past and an uncertain future, found herself drawn into a journey that transcended the boundaries of time and space. Amidst the rocky terrain and agent ruins, the connection between Sabine and Shin continued to evolve. Each shared glance, every unspoken understanding brought them closer. Ahsoka, attuned to the nuances of the Force, observed the dance of emotions between the two. She recognized the profound shift occurring, an alliance that surpassed mere camaraderie. As the groups converged on the sacred site where the Mortis Gods were said to be hidden, Sabine and Shin found themselves side by side, their destinies intertwined. Balin Skull, driven by a desire to reshape the Force, stood before the entrance to the sacred chamber. The agent symbols etched on the wall seemed to come alive as he approached, echoing with the echoes of a power that could alter the very fabric of reality. Sabine, recognizing the weight of the moment, turned to Shin with a mixture of determination and vulnerability. I used to believe I was alone in my struggles. It's strange finding someone who understands. Shin, her gaze meeting Sabine's, felt a resonance within herself, a recognition of shared vulnerabilities and unspoken desires. We're not so different, you and me, both shaped by the pain of our past. The agent chamber, bathed in an ethereal glow, held the secrets of Mortis. As Balin initiated the ritual, the force ripped with an intensity that transcended mortal comprehension. Ahsoka, sensing the magnitude of the event, cautioned against the potential consequences. As the agent chamber resonated with the cosmic energies of Mortis, Balin's skull, driven by a thirst for power, pressed on with his attempt to reshape the force. The symbols on the wall seemed to pulse with energy, and the air crackled with an unnatural force. Sensing the impending danger, Sabine, Shin, and Ahsoka moved with urgency. With lightsabers drawn, they confronted Balin just as he reached the climax of the ritual. You cannot comprehend the power I seek to wield. Stand aside or be consumed. Balin. The Force is not a tool for personal gain. You risk unleashing chaos upon the galaxy. Chaos is but a stepping stone to a new order, a new beginning. The confrontation escalated into a lightsaber duel, with Sabine and Shin joining forces against Balin. The clash of blades echoed through the agent chamber as they sought to prevent the culmination of his dangerous endeavor. As Balin's connection with the Mortis energies intensified, the gods, sensing the imbalance, withdrew their influence abruptly. The cosmic energies recoiled, creating a backlash that enveloped Balin. His eyes widened with realization as the very force he sought to control turned against him. Amid the turmoil, Balin's life force was drawn into the cosmic vortex, his form dissolving into the swirling energies of Mortis. Sabine, Shin, and Ahsoka, witnessing the cosmic retribution, were left in awe and disbelief. The agent chamber, once charged with the energies of Mortis, now settled into an eerie stillness. The symbols on the walls dimmed, and the air, once filled with cosmic resonance, grew calm. Sabine, contemplating the events that unfolded, turned to Shin with a mixture of relief and uncertainty. We've averted disaster, but what now? Now we forge our own path. We decide what comes next. As the echoes of Balin Skull's ambition faded away, Ahsoka, Sabine, and Shin stood together in the aftermath. Returning to the Nodi camp, Sabine and Shin found solace around the flickering flames of a modest campfire. The air was filled with a quiet calm, a stark contrast to the cosmic tempest they had just weathered. Seated beside the fire, Sabine couldn't help but steal glances at Shin. The soft glow of the flames accentuated the contours of Shin's face, and the shadows danced in the reflection of her eyes. That was... intense. I never thought we'd face something like that. The Force is a volatile thing, but we made it through. 
As they sat in the quiet aftermath, a subtle tension lingered between them. Ahsoka, respecting their need for a moment alone, discreetly moved away. The crackling of the fire seemed to echo the unspoken emotions between Sabine and Shin. Sabine, usually confident and composed, found herself navigating uncharted territory. Shin also felt a shift in the air, the connection between them deepening. I never imagined I'd find someone who understands the weight of our choices. Shin, her gaze meeting Sabine's, acknowledged the unspoken complexities. We've both carried burdens. Sometimes it takes facing the unknown to find common ground. In the gentle glow of the campfire, Sabine and Shin's eyes locked, an unspoken understanding passed between them. It was a moment of vulnerability, a recognition that the journey they shared had forged a connection that transcended the ordinary. As the quiet lingered, Sabine found herself drawn closer to Shin. The space between them seemed to shrink, the magnetic pull of shared experiences guiding them. At that moment, amidst the warmth of the fire, Sabine and Shin leaned in, their lips meeting in a soft and tender kiss. The world around them faded away, leaving only the crackling fire and the shared warmth of newfound emotions. Sabine and Shin, entwined in the dance of the flames, discovered that amidst the chaos, love could blossom. A flame that, once ignited, could illuminate the path ahead. The following morning, as the first rays of sunlight began to pierce through the dense Peridia atmosphere, the makeshift camp buzzed with activity. Ahsoka, Huang, Sabine, and Shin worked together to repair the T-6 Jedi shuttle. As the repairs progressed, the sky above caught their attention. Pergil soared gracefully above, their majestic form silhouetted against the morning hues. The cosmic creatures, seemingly attuned to the Force, painted a mesmerizing scene as they circled above. Just as the group marveled at the Pergil's display, a familiar silhouette appeared on the horizon, a ship descending towards Peridia. It was the ghost. The landing ramp lowered, revealing Hera Syndulla, Ezra Bridger, Chopper, and Jason Syndulla. Ezra, spotting Shin with Sabine, couldn't help but inject a touch of humor into the reunion. Hey, you know, she tried to cut my head off. Shin, rolling her eyes, retorted. Only because you deserved it. The banter between Ezra and Shin lightened the mood, and soon laughter echoed through the camp as Hera, Ahsoka, and Sabine and the rest exchanged stories of their respective journeys. The ghost and the T-6 Jedi shuttle prepare for departure. The Nodi people, grateful for the allies who had protected them, eagerly joined the crew. With everyone on board, the Ghost and the T-6 Jedi Shuttle lifted off from Peridia's surface, rising into the sky along the graceful Pergil. As they ascended into the open space, the Ghost and the Jedi Shuttle entered the immense mouths of the Pergil, guided by their natural navigation abilities. The cosmic creatures, now joined by the newcomers, propelled themselves into the vastness of hyperspace, returning to the known galaxy. And that's the end of the story, everyone. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you again to Penty Patrol Star Wars for helping me with the outline of the video. If you haven't already, please do check out his channel. Tell me in the comments what your thoughts were about the video. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like. If you're new, please consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Thank you again for watching. Have a great day and may the force be with you.